date. And a few weeks goes by till I get a response back. And it says, congratulations, you've been accepted to the inaugural Reykjavik Fringe Festival. And they're offering me eight shows in the capital of Iceland. And I'm over the moon about this. I'm, um, I've never been to Iceland before, and I've never got to do shows there. I think this is going to be a great trip. And I bring up my email, and I send an email to my friend who's told me about this opportunity. I say, thank you so much for this. I get to go to Iceland in July. And she says, hey, you know what? There's actually a hostel out in the west that's in this smaller town called Riff, and uh, they have a hostel there. It's this old fishing packing plant that they turn into a theater, and they do shows there. They do shows there every single day of the week. You should ask them if you can do a show there. And I'm like, you know what? I've already sent one email. Why not send the second one? So I Google this place, and I find a web page. I find an email, and I say, hi, this is my name. This is what I do. I would love to perform at your theater. And this guy gets back to me very quickly, and he says, no. I don't want you to just do one show at my theater. I want you to do two shows at my theater. So I could have been in the exact same position that I was, but I took the opportunity. I took that little bit of risk, and I sent two emails, and these people have responded in my kind, and now I get to go to Iceland. I'm going to do 10 shows in Iceland. But not only that, it's a few days before my trip that I'm at in my hometown of London, Ontario, and I'm having dinner with my dad. And he says to me, you know, the first lady of Iceland, she is born in Ottawa. You should invite her to your show. And I laugh at my father. I completely dismiss him. I'm like, you know what? I start thinking about all those negative thoughts, those things that we need to get rid of. I think about all of the reasons why not, why the first lady and the president of Iceland would say no. And I continue having dinner with my dad. However, it isn't until the next day that this idea that my father has planted in my brain starts to germinate. And instead of focusing on all of the negatives, I think about all of the reasons why. Because you only need one reason why. What if they say yes? So I start asking myself, you know what, if I were to invite the president and the first lady, what do I have to do? What does that look like? And you know what, I've already sent two emails. Why not send a third? So I Google, and I find a presidential web page with a presidential email. And I send it. I say, hi, my name's Keith Brown. This is who I am. This is what I do. Uh, I'm going to be uh, in your country. I'm going to be doing shows. You're Canadian. I'm Canadian. You're from Ottawa. I've performed in Ottawa. You should come to my show. <laughs> and within 24 hours, I get a response back from the personal assistant to the president and the first lady that says, we're very much interested in your show. Is it family friendly? Please tell us more. It's family friendly now. <laughs> yeah. And I hop on the plane. I hop on the plane and I'm flying to Iceland. And I, I fly with Wow Air. There's a reason they're bankrupt. They, they lost all of my bags. And uh, I'm now uh, arrived in Iceland and I'm with this Icelandic ma magician. His name is Gunnar. And he's showing me around. And he's, he's taking me to stores so I can replace a lot of my props. And that's when I get an email. And it's from the personal assistant. And it says, the first lady would like to accept. She'll be there Wednesday opening night at 6.30 p.m. And I start freaking out. I'm pointing at my phone. I'm saying things, but nothing is coming out of my mouth. And Gunnar is like, Keith, Keith, what is it? He thinks I'm, I'm having a stroke. And uh, I'm like, the first lady, the first lady, she's going to come to my shop. And he goes, oh, I've seen her at the grocery store. <laughs> I've even seen her at the pool. <laughs> to put it in perspective, the entirety of Iceland as a country is 350,000 people. It's the same population as my hometown of London. So everyone knows each other. They went to high school with each other or are related. No one is too famous in Iceland. For them, it is not a big deal, but I didn't want to let him step on my moment here. Uh, <laughs> But that's not all. So I, I do these shows out in this hostel. It's now opening night. I've got my bags back from Wow Air. I finally get to put on my suit, and I set up my show. I'm playing this uh, bar in downtown, downtown Reykjavik called Goikarin, and I set up my show, and I go backstage. And, and I've been sharing all of this on social media. I'm trying to bring pe people with me with this journey. And uh, I'm, I've been sharing, sharing screenshots of emails, and, and someone was like, hey, are you allowed to share the whereabouts of the First Lady, the times and locations? And an Icelander responded, it's Iceland. The police don't even have guns. <laughs> uh, so sure enough, I'm backstage and I'm saying, hey, it's Keith. I'm here about to do this show. It's opening night. The first lady said she'd be here. I'll let you know more afterwards. 
and I hit send. And as soon as I hit send, my stage manager walks backstage, says, she's here, she's here. And sure enough, they're already calling my name. And I have to walk out on stage and sitting right in the front row is the first lady of Iceland, her five and seven year old kids. And we have a great time together. And we get to talk afterwards. And she says, you know, this is the only show that we have time to go see in the entirety of the festival. Thank you so much for inviting us. So ladies and gentlemen, if there is something that you want in this life, I implore you to please ask for it. But be careful because you just might get it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But look, that was the first time that I went to Iceland. This was two Julys ago. I went back this summer. And I was like, you know, we got the first lady the first time. Let's try and get the president. So I send another email, and they get back to me very quickly. They say, Keith, we appreciate the invite. We're busy. Have a great festival. Uh, but I then turn to the Canadian consulate. I know that I'm going to be there for Canada Day. I'm like, you're Canadians. You're going to have a Canada Day party. You should hire me. And they say, look, Keith, we don't have any money, but we have hot dogs, and we have beer. I'll be there. So I show up, and they're at the ambassador's house, and they're, they're having this party for all these Canadians, and people are drinking, people are having hot dogs, and I get to perform some magic and tell people about my show that's happening down the street. And at the end, after most people left, there's only like four or five people left, and they're just packing up the last of things and about to take off. A car rolls up, and it pops out the first lady, and she says, we're so sorry. We thought it started at six. We didn't realize it ended at six. And then out pop her two kids and the president of Iceland. And everyone at the party looks at each other. I think I can stay for one more beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. And we stick around and, and we get to catch up. And I, I get to talk to the first lady again. I get to say hi to their kids again. And the little boy, he's like, you're that magician. Can, can you show me a trick? And I do. And he goes, again. <laughs> So I show it to him one more time, he goes, again! And I show it to him one more time, he goes, can you show that to my dad? And I say, yes, lead the way, little boy. <laughs> and he walks me over to the president of Iceland, and I show him this trick. And that's when I watch his face transform into that of a child. And that's one of the reasons why I love doing this, is that it doesn't matter who you are or what you look like, what you do for a living, the clothes that you wear, or the color of skin, or what you believe in. Magic has this amazing power to open the door to creativity and infinite possibility and pure imagination. So ladies and gentlemen, if there's something that you want in this life, I implore you to please ask for it, because you just might get it. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before I go real quick, I think we have a, a couple minutes. Would you like to see the trick that fooled the president and the first lady? Yeah? Earlier, I was asking, you know, what if I could predict the future? And earlier, I made a prediction. Uh, uh, I drove down here with Jason, and, and he picked me up at the train station. And in the train station, uh, I took this deck of cards, and I took one card out. One card that, 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 that I just had a feeling about. I spun it around and I stuck it back in. So right now, there are 51 cards face up. There is one card face down. And I'm the only person who knows what it is. But as an audience, I will you to be successful. And I'm sending out signals right now. I want to see if you're attuned to it or whether or not you can pick it up. You know, there's someone right here. You, you've got a lovely scarf and you're wearing glasses. Yes, right there. Uh, please, red or black, just name it out loud. Whatever feels right to you. Black, okay, excellent. And black cards, there are their clubs or their spades. And you know what, there's someone over here, uh, we, we kind of, yeah, you're looking at me as if you're like, no, not me, you're wearing glasses as well. You have nice long hair, you, you've, got, uh, you've got a necklace, you're, you're wearing black, right there. Black cards, are there clubs or spades? Do you think it's a club or a spade? A club, a club so we have a black card, we have a club. And, and you know what, right here in the front, we're in the green. Could you name any playing card, any one at all? Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, or king? Four. Four, four of clubs. Now. I'm gonna offer you an opportunity. <laughs> an opportunity to change your mind. Because this is the what if moment, this is the moment after. Maybe when, when you're grabbing another drink or you're asking people, uh, uh, talking to the speakers, or maybe tomorrow when you're you know, brushing your teeth or something, you're gonna ask yourself, what if I chose another card? <laughs> so for your benefit, because you might lose sleep, would you like to stay with the four clubs or do you want to change? Uh, we can change. What do you want to change to? <laughs> Pick the, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, Queen of Diamonds. Queen of Diamonds. Final answer? Yeah. Oh, well, we'll, 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 we'll still on clubs. It'll stay queen, but it'll be a black card, it'll be a club, it'll be queen of clubs, yeah? Sure. 
Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you earlier, out of all the cards, they were all facing one way except for one. There's one card reversed right here down in the center. And it is a black card, it is a club, and it is that queen of clubs. Thank you very much. My name's Keith Brown. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.